Are Toronto police listening in on your phone conversations? This week, reporters with the Toronto Star revealed the largest police force in the country has been using a controversial form of surveillance technology, despite denying it on the record. They're called stingrays, also known as IMSI catchers. Their purpose is to find a location of suspects. And that's just the beginning. Here's how they work. Cell phones are always trying to connect to nearby cell towers. A stingray acts like a cell tower decoy. In what's called a man-in-the-middle attack, it tricks cell phones into thinking it's the nearest cell tower, phones connect to the stingray, and police can access a range of personal information. They can find text messages, numbers dialed, and even listen in on calls. But it's a big net. They collect the information about the suspect's phone, but they also collect information about all the other phones that are operating in the area. A while back, when the Toronto Police Service told the Star they didn't use stingrays, the journalists questioned it. And the response has always been the same. We do not comment on investigative tools or techniques. And they fought to access records that showed police had used stingrays in at least five different investigations. But it took two years to do it. Kate Allen of the Toronto Star was part of the team that conducted the investigation. Okay, Kate, you asked the police if they were using these things. They said no, and you doubted them. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, uh, there's three of us on this story, and uh, we had sources that indicated that they did, in fact, use the technology. And we also knew from court documents that there had been a big drugs and guns case where they had used it. So we had information that they did, in fact, have the technology. Okay, so you, 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 you did the journalism groundwork, but then you had to get the proof, and it was a two-year process. Mm -hmm. What took so long? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. So we filed our first um, Freedom of Information request uh, two years ago, I think right about now, and, uh, you know, it's just a really long, um, convoluted process. So first, um, the police uh, blew the deadline. They're supposed to respond to you in 30 days, and they... Didn't, so we appealed to the Information and Privacy Commissioner, and then they responded to us, the police responded to us, saying that, um, that uh, no records existed that were responsive to our request. And uh, again, we didn't think that that was true, so we appealed again. And as it turned out, um, part of the reason that they, they were saying that there are no responsive records existed it was because they thought that if they did a search of their email system that it would crash, so they didn't do a search. <laughs> so the no, they thought that or they told you that was uh, All they said to us is that no responsive records exist. But when we appealed and the Information and Privacy Commissioner investigated or asked them, you know, what had happened, um, part, part of what they said was that we, they can't do a search. It would place an unreasonable burden on them because if they did a search, the email system would crash and they wouldn't be able to, to use it. So they just didn't do a search. So. The information commissioner said, sorry, that's not good enough. You have to do a search. And uh, there were more delays after that. There were time extensions and, you know, just extensions and delays. It's, it, like I said, it's a, it's a long process. And uh, finally, they got back to us um, saying that uh, they had, in fact, used a stingray in five separate investigations. So you were right. How did it feel knowing that? <laughs> well, it was really gratifying getting an answer after two years. I mean... That's not how the process is supposed to work. It's supposed to be speedy. It's supposed to, you know, enable transparency and democracy. And so having to go through this two-year-long slog to get really basic information. I mean, our position is that we shouldn't even have to go through freedom of information laws. We should just be able to ask, and they should respond, and we should, you know, they should share this information readily. Um, but it was really, you know, gratifying to finally get an answer after two years of, of searching. Most reporters know it can be challenging going up against the police. You did it for two years. Was there any point in this long investigation where you, you doubted it? And, and what made you keep pushing? Um, no, we never doubted it. I would say it's a good thing there was three of us on it because, you know, like it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of, you know, filing these long appeals. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not the fun type of journalism where you're out hitting the streets. It's a lot of typing, you know, letters. Um, so it was nice to have three of us so we could, you know, regroup and decide, you know, what to do next. Um, that, that really helped. Yeah. But we never thought about dropping it. Yeah. Kate, thanks. Thank you so much. Okay.